Now, the first time I covered the Gigabyte Aorus X7, it was groundbreaking for a few reasons. Number one was that it was incredibly thin for a full-powered gaming notebook. Number two was that it featured not one, but two graphics cards. And finally, I was incredibly impressed by the cooling and acoustics that Gigabyte had achieved when you factor in how thin it was. A global leader in tech recruiting is celebrating Geek Pride by giving away 10 amazing tech prizes. For more info, visit the Modus Facebook page or modus.com. Okay, so there was a bunch of other cool stuff as well. The all aluminum housing, white backlit keyboard that's actually surprisingly nice to type on, the flexible storage arrangement, and surround monitor gaming support made this a solid, easy to recommend product for me. But that's all old news. Fast forward to today, and the X7 has got a bit of a facelift. Now, instead of a 3.4 gigahertz turbo CPU, we get a 3.5 gigahertz turbo CPU. Instead of DDR3 1600 megahertz, we get 1866 megahertz. The macro functions buttons, programmable buttons on the side, are now called the macro engine programmable buttons on the side, and the power adapter has been boosted from 180 watts to 200 watts. Okay, so far, nothing that impressive, but then things get interesting. This new model now supports up to three MSATA SSDs in RAID 0, and, or RAID whatever you want, I guess, and it still has a two and a half inch drive bay for either an additional SSD or or a hard drive. That's a lot of storage, but still not the main event. No. The big change is the graphics cards. Instead of dual GTX 765 M's, the updated X7 has dual GTX 860 M 4 gig cards, which should amount to a real world performance improvement of 20% or more, and has Gigabyte making some pretty serious claims about how their upgraded ARS X7 can run with the big dogs and even beat the GTX 880 M. Conveniently, we have the excellent ASUS G750JZ in-house, which features an only slightly slower CPU and a 4 gig GTX 880M. So let's find out if it's happened. In a notebook, is SLI a valid alternative to a single more powerful GPU? We'll be looking at the X7 from a few angles, including raw performance, power consumption, and thermals, where the benefit of spreading the heat out across multiple processors in a thin form factor like this should be pretty obvious. One thing that I can tell you guys already is that compared to the G750JZ, it's definitely louder, but we expected that. So without further ado, take it away, Luke. SLI versus single GPU notebook battle royale. I'll start things off with power consumption. I was kind of surprised to see only about a 5% difference between these two laptops due to dual GPUs and completely different form factors and all that kind of stuff. One thing to remember is that your power consumption is going to be a lot more important on a laptop because you're more often going to be gaming mobile and that power is going to be coming from the battery instead of the wall. In terms of temperatures, the X7 fell behind a little bit. It was a lot hotter than our ASUS JZ that we had. Uh, part of that's going to play in because it's a much smaller form factor. They don't have as much space for things like heat sinks and giant fans. Um, but it does matter because it's going to predict the lifespan of your components inside of your laptop and really high temperatures are going to cause sweaty hand syndrome, that annoying thing where your hands get really gross when you're gaming on a laptop for too long because it is very hot. In terms of noise, we see the X7 fall behind again, but this is again due to its form factor. With the Jay-Z, the big, thick, massive Jay-Z, you are able to pack in big, thick, larger fans, which are gonna produce uh, lower noise levels, less annoying noise, and they're going to be better at dissipating heat. With the small, nice, slimline X7, you're not able to pack that huge fan in there, and that'll make it uh, not as effective at dissipating heat, louder, and have a little bit more annoying noise with higher pitches. And last but not least, we get to performance. The unfortunate thing that happened with Watch Dogs is the SLI profile didn't exactly take properly. This is a very new game, and this is a problem you're going to have when you're running SLI level systems. Things aren't going to be properly optimized. Profiles won't properly work. So when I was playing Watch Dogs, only one of the GPUs was able to go through. So when I was running with the same settings on the JZ and the X7, the X7 got crushed because only one of the GPUs worked. That being said, in the future, once the profile starts working, it'll be fine and it'll run much better. 
Like you see in Far Cry 3 and Bioshock Infinite, it ran completely fine, and even won in Far Cry 3 by a very small margin. In conclusion, it comes down to what you're looking for. If you're looking for a slimline gaming laptop, the X7 is probably not a bad idea because it is very slimline, the form factor is very nice. But then you have to deal with things like higher thermals and kind of annoying fan noise, but you don't have to deal with more power because it's 5% less power, but then you do have to deal with SLI problems, which may or may not be fixed in a timely manner for you to play the games that you wanna play. So there's a bunch of different variables that are up in the air. It's totally up to you, and these laptops are very different when it comes down to it.